Off the coast of Pensacola, Florida, below the rolling sea sits a piece of history. A 44,000 ton aircraft carrier called the Ariskany was sunk here by the Navy in May of 2006 to create one of the world's largest artificial reefs. It is the first, and because of its size, probably the most extraordinary of what the Navy hopes will be as many as 20 ship to reef projects over the coming decade. When the explosives were detonated, we anticipated about a four to five, maybe eight hours of, of sinking. The ship went down in less than 40 minutes, so it went much, much more quickly than we had anticipated, but the ship landed exactly the way we wanted, where we wanted, and now we've got the world's largest artificial reef, and we feel the world's best artificial reef. The 900-foot Oriskany sits in 212 feet of water and has become an international diving attraction. We're ready. <laughs> More than 4,200 dive boat trips were made to the Oriskany last year, some of them luring veterans who once served on the ship. Tom Dietmeyer, a retired Navy officer, served on the Oriskany for three years until 1968 and dove it last year. Reaching the Oriskany is challenging and not recommended for novice divers. Powerful currents surge around the ship, and even the topmost portion of the wreck, the ghostly control tower, is 80 feet below the surface. At 140 feet is the flight deck, and expands the width of half a football field. On October 26, 1967, Navy pilot John McCain took off on a Vietnam War bombing mission from the Oriskany's deck. Hours later, he was shot down and became a prisoner of war for over five years. Highly experienced divers can penetrate the rack and reach its innermost sections, like the control room or the engine room. Turning old Navy ships into reefs has its challenges. The Navy spent $20 million cleaning up the Oriskany to make it safe for divers and the environment. Even then, they left almost 700 pounds of toxic PCBs on board, mainly in wiring and insulation. The state of Florida is currently running tests to determine if they are entering the environment. Meanwhile, the ship is being dived nearly every day. Diving the wreck is unforgettable. Dropping down the buoy line, the ship emerges from the depths like an underwater city. Its scale is otherworldly. Sea life is abundant. Amberjacks, grouper, red snapper, sharks, and dolphins school around the wreck. Razor-toothed giant barracuda prowl the control tower and at times seem to hungrily eye visiting divers. Given its tough steel exterior, it should come as no surprise that the Oriskany has New York origins. Construction started in 1944 in the New York Naval Shipyard and the ship began active service in 1950. The carrier was appropriately named for a crucial battle of the Revolutionary War. The Navy is proud of the ship which will help keep a hard-won peace. It's not every day that adventure and history come together in such an exhilarating mix. While the Navy will likely sink more ships in the coming years, Glenn Clark of the Navy's inactive ship program told me that in the near future, there will be nothing on the scale of the Oriskany. For now, the Great Carrier Reef, as it is known, is one of a kind. This is Eric Olson reporting from Pensacola, Florida.